What's up, Bagger Nation? I'm Anthony Ion, a Colorado State champion and ACL pro here in the lab on another episode of Cornhole Science. Today, we're going to study the pitch technique, breaking down base mechanics consisting of everything below the waist, looking closely at the foot position, step, no step, knee contribution, ankle contribution. We'll conclude with body weight position and base movement throughout the pitch. Let's get in the box and get it going. Let's start with entering the box. Where should the body be positioned within the box on a standard hole shot? If we look at top players in the nation, all the way down to your top local players, this one's pretty consistent. An overwhelming majority of baggers will stay tight to the board. Now we do see exceptions. The next time you see ACL pro Ty Lopez, take a close look at where his body is positioned within the board on inside arm. Ty Lopez is a left-hander. As a left-hander, instead of staying tight to the board inside arm, Ty will actually take a one foot step out. Now what he's doing here is he's mocking when he's outside arm, and tight to the board, his arm is about that same distance as if he was taking a one foot step out. He's actually seeing more consistent reps doing it this way. Something to think about. We're in the box and we've determined we want to be tight to the board. Now within the box, where do I want to position my feet and what is happening ways down throughout the pitch? This is one of the most debated mechanics in cornhole and we still see the best of the best switching it up today. There's four main ways down or base presentations two of them being a no-step setup, and two of them being a stepping motion. Let's walk through them both. First, we have the throwing foot forward with no step. Throughout the pitch, the feet remain relatively stationary, and we have our throwing foot in front of the other. I'm a lefty, left foot forward. Next, we would have our non-throwing foot with no step during pitch. The same concept, but the leading feet are switched. So I'm gonna switch to my left, right foot forward, sorry, with my left throwing hand. Now, comparing the two, it's argued with a throwing foot forward, you have a better line, but you have a better chance of hitting your hip, grabbing that pocket during your throw. Now, alternatively, with the non-throwing foot forward, it's argued that it's easier to push and you're able to power slide through more laundry on the board. Finally, we have our steppers, where our baggers will take a step with either a non-throwing foot or a throwing foot. The first one is similar to bowling or what you would see in a, like a slow pitch softball where you're stepping with your non-throwing foot. Stepping with my right foot, throwing with my left hand, it would be kind of like a bowler or like a softball pitch. And then finally, we have our steppers with the same side. So we have a, in my case, left-hander, left foot step. Now within the four presentations just described, where are the feet located? We see everything from a very wide stance from Jimmy McGuffin and Sean Short to a very narrow stance from Gray Geary. There's an overwhelming majority of top baggers who set up within a half a shoe distance of heel to toe. So here's your heel to toe setup. You got your half a shoe closer and your half a shoe spread a little bit further apart. After analyzing 40 ACL pros, there's an overwhelming majority of baggers that set up within that half a shoe distance of heel to toe, actually 95%. With this significant of a majority, it could be argued that this is the setup baggers should be migrating to. Let's take a closer look at some of Cornhole's best, demonstrating all of this in more detail. Here's a good look at contrasting foot positions for the no-step technique. Both right-handers, we can clearly see the opposing foot forward. Wooten showing the throwing side foot forward, while Lane is set up non-throwing foot forward. If we follow the feet throughout the completed pitch, we will see everything below the waist remain stationary. Quickly cycling through some no-step setups at 2020 Worlds, you'll have an eye now for what to look for and see trends amongst top-level baggers. Windsor throwing foot forward. Birchfield throwing foot forward. Baldwin, throwing foot forward. Geary, throwing foot forward. We've got Moppin, throwing foot forward. We've got Cassidy, non-throwing foot forward, but we'll switch that foot up on the other side to always keep the back leg against the board. Hisner, throwing foot forward. Seals, throwing foot forward. Yeti Irwan, throwing foot forward. Cup, throwing foot forward. Fincham, throwing foot forward. Jamie Graham coming in, non-throwing foot forward. Here we're going to have an effective look at contrasting techniques for the step method. Finley and Duell are both positioned back of the box at least the distance of their steps so not to cross the foul line during pitch. 
We see the step method with other elite baggers like Damon Dennis, Matt Guy, Frank Modlin, and Eric Anderson to name a few. There's a list that's quite long actually. As Duel goes through her motion, she illustrates a non-throwing footstep. Here we have the bag in the right hand, but stepping with the left foot. Opposedly, Finley illustrates stepping with the throwing foot. Now see past the left-handed pitcher. Unlike Duel, Finley is stepping and throwing from the same side of her body. Left-handed pitch and a left foot step. Finley is one of the few at the elite level rocking this method. After analyzing 40 ACL pros who made it on the ESPN broadcast, only one bagger shared this method, and she only used it half the time. If you missed it during her incredible run at Worlds, watch Sarah Cassidy switch her step foot and singles to always keep her back leg tight to the board. After that deep dive into foot position and step versus no step, which below the waist mechanic is going to put the most bags in the hole for you? On this one, I'm going to point to comfort. Pick what feels natural and rep the crap out of it. Within the game today, there's nothing that suggests one technique is better than the other. We saw Jamie Graham on his 2020 run with his non-throwing foot forward. Matt Guy is still at the top of the food chain with his signature step. And then there's a long list of dominating baggers out there setting up with throwing foot forward. For what it's worth, I can tell you this. If we look at 40 ACL pros who made it on the ESPN broadcast, 70% of those baggers pitch with no step. Let that sit in for a minute. Most baggers do not step. Within that 70%, 68% pitch throwing foot forward. We can conclude that this setup is trending towards majority amongst the best of the best. To finish up our analysis of the pitch base mechanics, we'll discuss transition of weight below the waist. During the pitch, there's a natural shift of weight forward to provide enough energy to contribute to the 27 to 30 foot toss. Without this, the base would be extremely robotic, forcing all the energy to come from above the waist. Here's where baggers can make drastic improvements to minimize variables and eliminate non-value add movement. There's three main areas of contribution that add variables to the pitch mechanics. The first is the joint in the ankle. Movement here is typically in the form of a calf raise, or suspending weight on the tips or balls of the feet. Second, we have the knee. With so much allowable motion in the knee, we see a wide range of dipping and also acceleration coming out of the knee. The thing to consider here is any force provided from the base to the release of the bag has to be compensated by removing that force from above the waist. For example, a massive knee thrust will force a bagger to throw a lot softer. If we can eliminate knee and ankle contribution, there are less variables going into pitching the bag. Finally, there is the momentum of the body to project the bag forward towards the hole. Elite baggers will demonstrate minimal and clean transition of weight to the front foot. Some extremes here where baggers could improve would be finishing with a high back leg. To close out the topic of weight transition, we have to talk about the notorious step through. This is when baggers maintain forward momentum at the base, completing a back foot step across the foul line. We saw Matt Morton showcase this at the national level last year, inspiring popularity in California, and adoption by a few elite baggers like Pitcher and Smith. Everybody was trying it within their game just to see how it felt. Some baggers felt like their line to the hole was improved, and it was a good countermeasure to nervousness by staying loose and just kind of letting everything fall through. The step through is a controversial topic related to fine print in the rule book and an irritant to some baggers who find it distracting and in some exaggerated cases intruding in their space in the box. Consider this, the step through is not legal across all of organized cornhole. We're seeing the technique fading and it's almost not existent amongst the best of the best. With that in mind, I wouldn't suggest adopting the step through within your pitch technique. Let's cut to some film and look at this in further detail. To illustrate differences in setup, weight position, knee and ankle contribution, and transition of weight, let's look at Graham and Fincham side by side. At setup, Graham has even distributed weight with a heel to toe setup. Notice both heels to the ground and his upper body position over his hip. Differently from Fincham, notice the back heel up and majority of weight positioned over her front foot. During pitch, see the dip at the front knee for Fincham where Graham essentially shows no bend at the knee. As the pitch is complete for Fincham, she explodes from the lunge, standing tall on that front foot, 
while Graham gradually shifts his weight towards the hole, finishing with a minor back foot heel release. We can conclude from this that Graham is minimizing low body variables and contribution, limiting the pitch to mostly upper body motion. We see Graham's style as a trend amongst many of the elite baggers. Take a look at Baldwin. Feet heel to toe, no bend in the knees, even weight distribution transition forward with a slight calf raise finish. Same with Wooten. Heel to toe, small back heel raise. Windsor, similar with a slight front and back heel raise. Even with our elite steppers, we see the same mechanics. Watch Anderson using the step to transition his weight forward cleanly with no significant knee dipping and a back heel finish. Same with Dennis. Smooth weight transition with no significant knee contribution. To help characterize where technique is settling today, we can look to some more unorthodox mechanics. Let's take a look at Braun. We see a little rocking motion knee contribution, then a real high back leg finish. Studying Damal's technique, he's exaggerating the front knee probably to avoid hitting it and has an extreme transition of weight over the front foot, also with an exaggerated back leg finish. Let's conclude our film session on body weight transition with a study of the step through. Unlike the heel and leg finishes, baggers carry their body across the foul line with a step from the back foot. Watch pitcher demonstrate a quiet base. No dips or non-value add movement, but finishes with a step across the foul line. Similarly, we'll pull in parent who shows a non-throwing foot forward demonstration of the same. Let's wrap this up and draw some conclusions from what we studied today. Using 40 ACL pros who made it on the ESPN broadcast as our data set, we can conclude that an overwhelming majority of baggers are going to set up tight to the board within a half a shoe distance of heel to toe. Choosing whether to step or no step, throwing foot forward, non-throwing foot forward should be based on comfort. Although today in the game, a majority of elite baggers do not step with throwing foot forward, there's no good data yet to suggest one is better than the other. Set up with weight evenly distributed on both feet, and minimize non-value add movement in the knees and the ankles and cleanly transition weight to the front foot with a comfortable finish, avoiding a high back leg finish. The next episode of Cornhole Science will finish up pitch technique with above the waist mechanics, analyzing everything from hips to wrist. If you're interested in future discussions and topics like grips and releases, that's the hot one. I know everyone's blasting me on that one. Game strategy, bag science, statistics, and much, much more, make sure to like the Cornhole Science page. As always, I look forward to seeing you all on the boards to talk cornhole as we're all trying to figure out this complex game. I'm Anthony Ione here in the lab. Until next time.